So you've built a custom subwoofer enclosure and now you need to mount the subwoofer. Now you can use wood screws to mount the subwoofer to the box, but the problem is if you ever need to remove that subwoofer from the box, that wood screw just isn't going to have the same hold on the wood as it originally did when you reuse that hole. So what do we need to use so that we can mount the subwoofer and unmount the subwoofers multiple times in a box without issues and still have a very strong hold? That my friends, is coming up. So when it comes to perfectly mounting our subwoofers to our custom subwoofer box, we're going to need a couple of different things. In all of my videos, I always link everything that we're using down in the video description so you guys can check out links to these different tools and the materials that I'm gonna be using down there. Now, just in case you're new to the channel or if you're new to this project, this is for Project Stealth Build. This actually goes in the spare tire well of the trunk. So I need to mount these subwoofers into this baffle. If you wanna see the video on how I built this box, you can check it out up on the corner of the screen. Now, obviously I have my subwoofers sitting here inside of the baffle. And the first thing I need to do is I need to mark the exact mounting locations of each of these mounting holes. To do that, I'm gonna be using these. These are center punches. As you can see, I have a wide variety of different sizes to choose from here, and this allows me to perfectly match it up with the size of the hole on the subwoofer. So the goal here, let's try this one. We wanna find one that basically fits snug. That one's a little bit too big. Next size down. That one's perfect. So now that I've found the correct size center punch, I put it through each of the holes and give it a tap using a hammer. Now, obviously I have to be careful during this step because I don't wanna damage my subwoofers. Once I have all those mounting holes marked, I can carefully remove the subwoofers and put them in a safe location. Now at this point, it's going to be kind of difficult in order to actually find those spots. If you use something like this, this is an automatic punch, you can find it with the tip. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna emphasize each of these locations just by doing the automatic punch a few more times. So now it's much more obvious. The next step here is to drill some holes using the drill bit in those locations because I'm going to be mounting these. These are a wooden threaded insert. Again, I'll put a link for these down in the video description. And what these do is they allow us to take a mechanical fastener like this and thread into them. The advantage of this is we can take the subwoofers in and out of the enclosure multiple different times for servicing, and it's a nice robust mounting solution. To drill these holes, I need to start with using the right size drill bit. In this case, the manufacturer of these says that I should use a seven millimeter drill bit, so I've got one right here. And now the other thing I've done is I don't wanna drill all the way through the wood on the baffle. I only wanna drill partially through, only deep enough to actually mount these. So I've put a piece of tape on the drill bit that way I know where to stop. Let's do some drilling. Now, of course, the size of these that you're gonna use is going to be determined by the holes on your subwoofer. For those of us here in the States, these are the different sizes that I like to keep on hand. I find that for smaller speakers and for subwoofers, typically a number eight fastener works good. For mid-size subwoofers like 10s and 12s, usually a 1024 works good. And for much larger subwoofers, usually we have to step up to a quarter 20. So that's why I like to just keep these different sizes on hand. But if you're trying to determine which size of the wood fasteners to order, what I would say you should do is go to the hardware store and these type of fasteners are much more common. Buy one small package of each of the different sizes and see what fits best on your subwoofer. And then you'll know right away what to match it up with for the wood insert. With that said, if you do a lot of custom car audio, it's worth it just to have the different sizes on hand. Right, buddy? Now that I have the hole made, I can thread one of these down in. And to do so, you're going to be using either Allen wrenches by hand, or I'm gonna use an impact driver with this guy. <laughs> So I've got one done. Now I need to complete the process for the rest of the holes. One, two, and there we have it. Now all of our fasteners are mounted into this baffle, ready for us to mount our subwoofer. Now I of course still need to wire these subwoofers. I still need to paint the top of this enclosure. So I'm only gonna mount the one just to give you guys an idea what it looks like when we're actually mounting it in. But here we have it. It's completely mounted using mechanical fasteners along with the wooden 
threaded insert. Now I can take this subwoofer in and out multiple times and service it if need be, redo the connections, whatever I need to do, and not worry about compromising the integrity of my holes in this box that I've spent a ton of time on making. Now I know you guys are probably going to ask, why not use these guys? Why not use T-nuts? Now I've used these in the past, but I've had a couple of problems with them. With the T-nut, the only thing that's really holding it in the enclosure are these little spikes. Since you have to mount a T-nut from the inside of the enclosure, I find that sometimes when you push that fastener into the T-nut, if you push too hard, it can easily push the T-nut out of the wood. Another thing about T-nuts is they have this very large flange, and sometimes depending on the design of your subwoofer or speaker, if the mounting hole is close enough to the inside diameter hole that you actually have to cut for the subwoofer or speaker, that mounting flange can stick out into it and it can scratch the speaker or subwoofer or not even and let it get into the enclosure. Finally, another thing that I don't like about the T-nuts is that you have to mount them from the inside of the enclosure, which means you're making a hole all the way from the outside of the box to the inside. And that brings me to my next point. Rather than mounting the threaded inserts that I showed you guys in this video this way, why didn't I mount them on the inside of the box like this and have the fastener go into it this way. Well, again, I avoided this because I've started to find that it's better if I don't drill all the way into the enclosure with that mounting hole. If you remember when I actually drilled the hole, I marked my drill bit so that I only needed to drill deep enough for the insert itself and not all the way through the wood. I found that by doing this, especially for a sealed enclosure, it prevents any air from leaking out around the mounting fastener. Now, if I'm using a ported subwoofer box, I don't have to be as concerned about drilling that hole all the way through. Additionally, if I'm using really, really big subwoofers or subwoofers that are really heavy and they're mounted on a vertical plane rather than a horizontal plane, if they're mounted like this where they're putting more force on the fasteners, I would say in that case, I would probably come from the backside with these so that I have a little bit stronger hold. Now, if you guys watch these videos, be sure to also follow me on Instagram. My username over there is at Car Audio Fab. Lately, I've been posting more live videos that show you more of my process step by step. If you're new here to the YouTube channel, I like to make car audio review videos and build log videos, and also videos like this one that teach you guys different techniques. So if you enjoy that kind of thing, you can also check out some of my other videos here on screen. A special thanks to John, Brian, John, Ali, Nick, Steve, Jerry, Emmanuel, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to those guys for helping with the making of these videos. If you guys wanna join the team, check it out down below. As always, my friends, thank you guys for watching.